storage layer in a hyper-converged infrastructure, media types and how they can be presented to the system. In the previous video, we highlighted the main protocols and how they interconnect storage and network layers in a hyper-converged system. Now, it would be appropriate to talk about the storage itself. Before we jump into the storage media comparison, let's first get an understanding of how the storage itself can be presented to the servers. Simple enough, there are three main approaches. Direct Attached Storage, or DAS, Network Attached Storage, or NAS, and Storage Area Network, simply SAN. The main difference is that they store data on different levels, basically on the file and block levels. On a file level, data is stored as a single piece of information inside a folder. To access that piece of data, the system needs to know the path to find it. Data stored in files is organized and retrieved using a limited amount of metadata that tells the system exactly where the file itself is being kept. On a block level, data is split into blocks that are stored as separate pieces. Each block of data has its own unique identifier, which allows a storage system to place the smaller pieces of data wherever it's most convenient. These blocks are controlled by operating systems, and each block can be further formatted with the required file system. In a nutshell, NAS works on a file level, while DAS and SAN work on a block level. Network Attached Storage NAS consists of a number of disks arranged, in most cases, in a certain RAID level to maximize the overall performance and achieve the required data redundancy. Such devices have core operating systems, allowing low-level processing and file systems management. File systems, in turn, share the disk content over the network on the object level, over such high-level protocols like SMB or NFS. NAS systems are ready-to-go appliances bundled with software that delivers shared storage. Each bundled component is easy to scale. And last but not least, the nice thing about NAS is that it brings a lot of cool features to your infrastructure. They're basically built into the appliance. NAS provides such features as antivirus protection, file versioning, auto backups, and many others. Ask your NAS vendor for the full list. You'll be impressed. Compared to a SAN, NAS systems are easier to integrate into existing environments and to set up. NAS are typically configured as a network share and they don't require any particular infrastructure. Therefore, they're also less costly to implement compared to a SAN. But you need to view NAS systems just as storage and nothing more. You see, some NAS appliances cannot provide block storage for your VMs, which is why you won't be able to utilize them as shared storage for the VMs. It should be noted, however, that nowadays, certain NAS appliances can also provide storage on the block level, for example, over iSCSI. As you can see, the line between NAS and SAN is getting blurrier, especially when we're talking about SMB products, as both can have similar functionality and feature sets. Storage Area Network SAN is a disk array or multiple disk arrays attached to a client with a dedicated network. It's a block-level storage system that can be accessed via such fast protocols as iSCSI, Fiber Channel, FCOE, and others. So why would you typically use SAN? Well, to achieve high performance and build shared storage for your VMs. SAN utilizes disks more efficiently, allowing you to squeeze maximum speed out of your IT infrastructure. SAN can be managed as a single entity giving you the opportunity to slice up different storage pools and present them over the network as shared storage. SAN can be easily scaled and often comes with additional features like replication and storage-based snapshots. SANs are typically faster than NAS appliances, but they also have several disadvantages. Even a mediocre SAN will cost you a pretty penny. Also, managing such a storage system is quite an effort and it's a time-consuming routine. You need specialized knowledge to orchestrate such an architecture. Direct Attached Storage DAS devices are directly connected to servers or workstations without any network in between. 
The most common examples are SATA and SAS drives in server disk bays. DAS can have many different types of interfaces used for connecting to a server, such as IDE, ATA, SATA, SAS, and SCSI. DAS storage can also be an external box, which is called JBOD. External DAS overcomes the issues of physical space and distance between the host server and the storage disk array. In addition, the storage array can be shared by more than one host server. The difference between external DAS, SAN, or NAS is that DAS cannot work independently without servers, and the connection distance is up to 25 meters, while SAN and NAS can provide storage over kilometers of network. Although DAS is typically less scalable than NAS or SAN, it has a big benefit behind it. It has the lowest cost of all three options. In a hyperconverged infrastructure, compute and storage resources are combined within the same physical box. The software layer is used to replicate the local storage and make it accessible over the hyperconverged network as a traditional SAN. As a result, a hyperconverged infrastructure gains most of the enterprise grade SAN benefits, together with higher cost efficiency and lower maintenance demand. Still, NAS, SAN, and DAS are just a few options of how storage can be presented to servers. So now let's talk about the storage media that are used in modern infrastructures like hard disk drives, also called spindle drives or simply HDD, and solid state drives called flash or SSD. Hard disk drives. HDD or spindle drives are non-volatile data storage devices. Hard disk drives first appeared in the 1950s. Rapid advancement in technology led to an increase in their capacity by orders of magnitude, so much that modern HDD is able to store up to 20 terabytes of data with a price tag as low as 3 cents per gigabyte. However, the serious disadvantage of hard disk drives is that their operation relies on mechanical principles. HDD stores information in a magnetic form on the surface of a platter. It's covered with a thin layer of ferromagnetic material and is perfectly polished. To increase HDD capacity, each platter has two magnetic surfaces and a group of identical platters is mounted together to form a platter assembly. Once an HDD is powered on, an electrical motor spins up the platter assembly to nominal speed and this rotation continues until HDD is powered down or goes into power saving mode. This speed, which is called rotational speed, is measured in revolutions per minute, or RPM, and makes a significant impact on both sequential and random access performance. Depending on the RPM, there are 7.2K RPM, 10K RPM, and 15K RPM HDDs. Spindle drives have high latency and low performance on small block random operations, which makes HDD-based storage not the best choice for virtual machines and databases. But good sequential performance, together with the lowest price per one gig, are well suited for file servers, backups, and archives repositories. 15K RPM disks are quite questionable in 2021, since the price per one gig is higher than for entry-level enterprise SSD drives. Solid State Drives Unlike HDDs, SSD uses semiconductor chips, not magnetic media, to store data, which is saved to a pool of NAND flash. One of the functional limitations of SSDs is that, while they can read and write data to an empty drive very quickly, overwriting data is much slower. While SSDs read data at the page level and can write at the page level, assuming surrounding cells are empty, they can erase data only at the block level. SSDs show an excellent read and write performance and low latency. Flash drives use a SATA, SAS, or NVMe interface to transfer data. SATA SSD drives can be purchased at nearly the same price as 10K, 15K RPM HDD, 
but the performance of flash drives is much higher. SATA drives usually have SFF, or small form factor, for the enterprise, and SFF, or M2 form factor, for the consumer market. SAS drives provide better throughput and can be connected to two RAID controllers for redundancy, which makes them ideal for single box physical SAN deployments. NVMe is the quickest and most expensive interface and has additional limitations in terms of local redundancy, as there is still a lack of hardware RAID controllers supporting NVMe and PCIe lanes availability with four lanes per drive for maximum performance. Just like any young technology, NVMe devices have different form factors, M.2, U.2, PCIe add-on card, Intel EDSFF, and others. Flash drives deliver excellent read-write performance on small blocks, which makes them the ideal media for virtualized, hyper-converged infrastructures. Taking into account the constantly decreasing price per one gig of SSD, even low demanding workload would benefit from using it, leaving spindle devices for file servers and backups. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Tune in next time to learn about RAID Examples of Usage.